Hello class. Today we have another SCP for you today. I won't waste too much time, so let's just get right into things here. Today's SCP is SCP-2997, Ashes of the Fallen. Object class is safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-2997 is to be stored in a high-value observation chamber. It is to be placed in a pedestal in the center of its chamber, and every surface is to have cameras installed as to monitor the activities of SCP-2997-2. In the event that SCP-2997's tracking chip exits Sites-242, Mobile Task Force Lambda 37, aka Geiger Counters, is to be dispatched immediately in an effort to retrieve SCP-2997. Description SCP-2997 is an ornate urn constructed of smoky quartz originating from Japan in the 16th century. It absorbs all forms of radiation coming into contact with it except for visible light. There are two Japanese inscriptions on SCP-2997 that read, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And the other inscription reads, They believed. SCP-2997-1 is a pile of human ashes contained within SCP-2997. It constantly releases a varying amount of gamma radiation, the amount of radiation released at any given point has ranged from lethal to infinitesimal. SCP-2997-2 is a collective designation for a group of two-dimensional figures that may be seen on any surface with a direct line of sight to SCP-2997. Instances of 2997-2 resemble nuclear shadows of human beings of variable age, gender, height, weight, etc. Instances of 2997-2 can be seen performing many different actions, but the most common ones resemble praying at an altar, treating burns, conversing, or attending what resembles to be a Roman Catholic Mass. All attempts at communication with instances of SCP-2997-2 have been unsuccessful. SCP-2997 was found in the basement of the Church of St. Joseph in Omara, Japan, where it was being used as a centerpiece in a shrine. The search was launched following multiple reports of an urn of souls in a church somewhere in Nagasaki, Japan. A squad from Mobile Task Force G3, aka the Exorcists, was dispatched to ascertain the existence and retrieve it. Upon arrival at the Church of St. Joseph, MTF Chi-3 was attacked by a member of the Congression who was praying at the shrine containing SCP-2997 at the time. He was successfully sedated and all witnesses were questioned about SCP-2997 before receiving amnestics. The head priest of the Church of St. Joseph produced a burned piece of parchment from a safe and claimed that he found it and SCP-2997 resting on a piece of the altar from Urakami Cathedral under a small pile of rubble. A transcript of the document can be found in Addendum 2997-02. Addendums Addendum 2997-01 On Redacted An instance of SCP-2997-2 resembling Kane's lupus familiars was seen walking with two instances of SCP-2997-2 that resemble men carrying rifles. Addendum 2997-02 a transcript of the document recovered from SCP-2997. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, 
even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Below the words are the seals of the archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. Well, that's the end of this one here today. Really leaves a lot of questions on what exactly this whole thing was for and what exactly it was doing in Japan of all places as while the faith of Christianity is present in Japan, it's far from the norm. Oh well, a bit above my pay grade and well, that's what these classes are for, for you to question and to hopefully one day figure out. But as I said, that's all from me today. Thank you very much for attending. Have a good rest of your day. And until next time. All right. Hello, class. This is a very special lecture. If you look around, you'll notice that the people in this lecture are of level four clearance or higher for the SCP Foundation. And that's no accident or coincidence. The reason why that is, is because today we're going over a very secret SCP that no one, look at me, I mean no one, under clearance level 4 is able to know this information that I am going to share with you all. Alright? I know I'm known for bending the rules, I know I'm known for breaking a few rules here and there, for educational purposes, but in matters that are truly serious, such as this SCP, I mean it. Level 4 clearance or higher. If you are caught revealing this information to any level 3 or lower, let's just say that, best case scenario, you're probably going to lose your job. Worst case scenario, I'm not even sure the Foundation would allow me to say what's going to happen. But without further ado, let's try and get into this. Now, this lecture may be a bit more sporadic than usual, as the document for this SCP isn't exactly concise, and that's for good reason. In fact, the only reason I know the specific number of this SCP is because of where it's listed in our files. SCP-2521. Now I see a few confused looks throughout this room here for our newcomers, thinking what could possibly be so special about this one. Well, SCP-2521 only manifests whenever information about it is written down, saved, or spoken about. Hence why the file you were all given today is made purely out of symbols, as symbols seem to confuse the entity and be unable to realize that it's talking about it. So things such as drawings or symbols given meaning to mean this particular entity don't seem to trigger its manifestation. As for its appearance, it's a slightly humanoid figure, however it stands far taller than the average person at around 7 feet tall. Rather than fingers, it seems to have these dark tendril-like appendages that are incredibly sticky and near impossible to break out of. Now, containment for this entity, wondering perhaps maybe why we don't just simply lock it in a box somewhere, is virtually impossible, and it is able to phase through any object, and I mean any object, stone, steel, concrete, titanium, Anything, it can simply phase through as if it was you or I walking through air. So physical containment of this entity is full-blown impossible. This is why, as I stated before, 
all mentions or documentation of this entity are to be done with symbols as it is quite literally the only possible way to contain this entity experiment number 1 a d class personnel is told to write down information given to them about this scp Once the D class did so, SCP-2521 materialized and seized the document that the D class personnel wrote about it. It then vanished, and the D class personnel cowered underneath the table. What happened to the document is completely unknown, as are its whereabouts. Experiment B. Another D class personnel is told to say information given to it through symbols that it was given on a document. The D class speaks the information given to it through these symbols in SCP-2521 manifests and takes the D class away, disappearing out of thin air. Where the D class went is unknown however he is presumed dead no further experimentations with scp-2521 are to be conducted without at least two go-aheads from level 5 clearance members for those of you wondering how us in this room are safe how i personally am safe while talking about this is through a certain SCP. In fact, it is thanks to this SCP that we even know about this entity in the first place. As for what specific SCP that is, unfortunately that is classified and even I will not give that information to you. But due to limited testing and limited information, that is all we have for right now. Now, uh, if any of your uh, notebooks or any of your recording devices happen to go missing after this lecture, I'm not responsible for that. However, you personally should be safe. But until next time. Hello, once again, class. Taking a little break here from the urban legends and video game lore to get back into the good old SCPs. Now I know we all like the urban legends. I do too. I like the video game lore. Don't get me wrong, but I have obligations to keep to the foundation under contract. And trust me, the foundation is not an organization you exactly want to upset. Besides, you guys all seem to enjoy yourself while you're here anyway for these. But without further ado, let's begin. Today's item number is SCP-1104, otherwise known as the Nose Crabs, quite hilariously. The object class is Keter. Special containment procedures. Complete destruction of SCP-1104 is endorsed should adequate means be developed. While individual instances of SCP-1104 are easily terminated, SCP-1104 is endemic to the subsurface geological formations in northwestern Redacted. rendering the surmised primary population of SCP-1104 increasable to the convenient lethal agents. A surrounding area of 10 kilometers in diameter has been diagnosed as Site-104. Description. SCP-1104 is a species tentatively identified as a member of Order Calicerata. The life cycle of SCP-1104 compromises at least two distinct phases, the first being a larval stage, approximately 0.4 millimeters in diameter, at irregular intervals. Larval SCP-1104 are expelled from lava tubes within SCP-104 at concentrations up to 200 individuals per cubic meter. These remain airborne for as long as 14 hours and have been documented to travel at least Redacted. kilometers under favorable weather conditions. 
When inhaled, the larva will adhere to nasal mucosa, where they excrete an array of H1 receptor antagonists that suppress both local inflammation and implementation of further larvae. Over a period of six to eight months, SCP-1104 will grow and extend appendages through the host's ethmoidal canals. Hosts generally remain unaware of the presence of SCP-1104 apart from persistent but nonspecific headaches. On maturation, SCP-1104 will begin applying pressure to the host's optic nerves, causing obstruction of the central visual field. This pressure is applied selectively when the host is not orientated towards local gradient of atmospheric hydrogen sulfide, which SCP-1104 can detect through the host's inhalations. After an initial period of distress, the host will begin to prefer to face and travel in directions where they do not experience visual disturbances, thus tracing the source of hydrogen sulfide. Upon reaching a zone of sufficient hydrogen sulfide concentration, SCP-1104 projects appendages into the host's prefrontal cortex, causing unconsciousness, during which SCP-1104 exits the host via the ocular cavity. After leaving the host, SCP-1104 attempts to locate and enter the source of hydrogen sulfide, such as a lava tube or a sewer pipe. SCP-1104's subterranean life cycle has not been documented. Although humans display the same instinctual aversion as any animal to visual disturbances caused by SCP-1104, the behavioral response is not a compulsion, and hosts may defy the influence, especially if informed of the nature of SCP-1104. Note that subsequent hostility towards research personnel should be anticipated. Attempts at surgically removing or poisoning a fully developed SCP-1104 result in immediate elicitation of its exit response. Post-exit, hosts exhibit complete aspontaneity due to orbitofrontal lesions and to date have provided no permanent information in debriefing. Thank you for taking part in today's lecture. I hope you all enjoyed, and until next time.